Wise men say that only fools rush to find horcruxes, but we can't help but love Harry Potter. After all, Pobody's nerfect, not even the chosen one. Potter is never far from trouble, and that leads to big decisions for him to make. Sometimes he's bold and brave, like when he saved Jenny from the basilisk. And then there's the times that he slips up <coughs> horcrux hunting. <laughs> you may disagree, and that's fine. After all, he always ends up a hero in our book. Harry's had his fair share of mistakes, though, and we have evidence to prove it. Unless you've got a copy of that ring tape, you probably don't know when your life thread is going to get cut. Don't worry, it's not a bad thing at all. Staring down the barrel of that reality is something that we wouldn't wish on our worst enemy. Of course, anyone who knows Harry Potter knows he was put in this exact situation. Actually, it's even worse. Harry had to voluntarily consent to cross over at the hands of Voldemort. Put yourself in Harry's shoes. You're facing the greatest evil in the entire world. The boy who lived, come to die. Trying to stop him felt fruitless for years, but you finally know the solution. All the other work is done and you just need him to destroy you. Just, wow, talk about a brave moment. Well, you're probably asking, why put it so high up in this list if it's so brave? The answer is simple. This one was super obvious. Yes, it's the most significant, most heroic moment in Harry Potter's entire life. It's also the one that everybody thinks of in the film series. Trust us, from here on out, we are going full speed. You're gonna get a lot of whiplash in this video. Not, not quite my temple. No, not that whiplash. We're talking about the constant back and forth between Harry at his best and Harry at his worst. Here is one of the most frustrating movie moments in the entire franchise. Yes, we hear you comment section. It does happen differently in the books. That doesn't excuse the pure stupidity of this moment. Thousands of people go through King's Cross Station every single day, but no one has messed up traveling this badly. Here's the first foolish part. Who lets the two 12-year-olds go on the Hogwarts Express alone? Make sure everyone gets through, not just the first-year child. Even worse, they only had a few minutes to get through the wall. Who boards that late? You're magical. Plan ahead. And finally, the big moment that just made Harry look way too foolish. Yep, he stole a flying car in the middle of broad daylight. I should tell you. Most muggles aren't accustomed to seeing a flying car. These are children. Who gave them the keys? What a mess. Seriously, Harry, you, you didn't need to do that. Trolls are massive, brutal creatures. In any fantasy world, they're not what you want to run into at any point. If you doubt their power, just check on any troll fight ever. No one escapes unscathed. Of course, putting it in this context makes this first-year Harry Potter moment hold more weight. You all doubted the troll, but listen up. Those are all three children who've barely reached the double digits. What were you doing when you were 11? You certainly weren't fighting trolls and winning. What's that? Oh, what were we doing? Well, that's that's not important. We certainly weren't eating crayons in the back of the class. Uh, we're getting distracted, though, so back to Harry being brave. The argument does not stop at age. All the adults in the room after that battle are shocked. They know to beat a troll had to be sheer dumb luck, as Professor McGonagall puts it. However, we saw them battle. Harry and Ron barely know any magic. Hermione was trapped in a corner, they fought their way out of that situation, and no luck was needed. It started out with Harry's brave decision. Hindsight's 2020, so Harry is gonna need Hermione to fix his glasses again to see this mistake from his past clearly. Look, one-on-one -on -one time with Snape is not ideal. He may be the cherished character that we all adore now, but that wasn't always the case. Back in the Order of the Phoenix, Harry needed to spend a lot of time with his least favored guardian to practice Occlumency. Okay, some of you are forgetting what that term is. Occlumency is the magical art of closing one's mind to legilimency. Let him Both these types of magic take a strong wizard or witch to perform. Harry spent months working on fighting off legitimacy from Snape to no avail. It turned out that this was going to directly affect his future in the movie, but that's for a later entry. Harry was getting better. He wasn't improving much, but it's a long process. Instead of keeping a level head, he lashed out at Snape. Yes, we did get to see more of Snape's backstory. Still, it also stopped lessons and prevented Harry from using occlumency against Voldemort. Harry and Draco always seemed to have a hate-hate relationship, but that was supposed to change in the last film. 
First of all, there was a deleted scene where Malfoy throws Harry his wand as the battle with Voldemort begins. Malfoy finally stands up to the big bad evil guy and stops trailing down into his darker side. What we want to focus on is the moment Harry showed his genuine sympathy for Draco. After the room of requirement is set ablaze, young Malfoy is stranded atop a junk pile. It's Harry and his friends that manage to find some brooms. They could have just left Malfoy and his friends to their fate. Instead, Harry turns around and heads into grave danger. We can't leave them! He's joking, right? Ron protesting the decision shows just how brave and noble it was. See, Harry is a true Gryffindor. Here's the real truth. They don't like each other at all. Well, okay, that's a bit dramatic, but it's true in the earlier movies. Malfoy always ended up on the rough end of a main character's temper. Don't get us wrong, he still deserved punishment for his bullying. That is, until the Half-Blood Prince came along. Harry was in his sixth year by this point. He's well on his way towards becoming a serious force in the wizarding world. The moment we're talking about didn't happen in his third year or something like that. That would have been more understandable. By this point, Harry had been misled by a book before. Anybody remember Tom Riddle's diary? Why would he trust this unknown spell? Have you ever heard of this spell? Sectum Sempra. Establishing when they say to use it on your enemies. Sectum really, Harry? That's like taking random liquids off a chemistry table and drinking them. We all know the end result is a grim battle wound to Draco and a foolish Harry standing there dumbfounded. We have good news and we have bad news. The good news is that Harry isn't the only character to stupidly trust an anonymous book with dark magic inside of it. The bad news is that the other book was a horcrux trying to capture Ginny Weasley's soul. In the Chamber of Secrets, Harry boldly enters the Basilisk Den with limited knowledge of his opponent. He only recently realized what kind of creature was terrorizing the school. Plus, the fact that it was Tom Riddle pulling the strings was totally new to him. Of all the final battles in these books, this one leaves Harry the least prepared heading into it. Fighting off Dementors and doing the Triwizard Cup had a lot more prep time built in. Walking into the unknown, hiding from a basilisk, and destroying a horcrux at age 12 is something else. Harry's really just showing off at that point. Let's head back in time for a moment. You're watching Final Destination 3, getting all excited for the final Harry Potter book to hit those shelves in July of 2007. What do you expect of the book? If you said anything about Harry spending the majority of the book wandering around looking for horcruxes, you're a liar. Or maybe you're JK Rowling, one or the other. We all expected him to go back to school, but the chosen one declined the offer. Instead, Harry attempts to leave by himself to find Voldemort's horcruxes scattered across the earth. We're not saying he was foolish to go after them, he was unwise to go in unprepared. Hermione, when have any of our plans ever actually worked? Some of you will argue that he knew it was hopeless and warned Hermione and Ron not to come. This is true, but he gets equally frustrated by them attempting to help. They were helpers, and getting more trusted wizards to assist wouldn't have been a bad idea. Instead, he gets tea with Mr. Lovegood and learns about the Deathly Hallows. In all things evil and wicked, few strike anger in the hearts of mortals quite like Dolores Umbridge. She's the queen of cold, the bureaucratic butcher, and just a flat-out awful person. Umbridge is kind of like if Toby Flenderson from The Office had a spine. She's honestly one of the vilest villains in history, which is the whole point of this entry. Harry Potter manages to stand up to her in several ways, none as symbolic as Dumbledore's army. We've got to be able to defend ourselves. Yes, it's Hermione and Ron that push him into starting the group, but it's his leadership that allows it to flourish. The battle for Hogwarts in the seventh film would have gone differently without Dumbledore's army in the ranks. What's more, he's doing all this behind Umbridge's back, knowing the kind of trouble that it could cause. It's sort of exciting, isn't it? Breaking the rules. All of this surmounts to a brave moment in Potter's Hogwarts career. He risked his entire fifth year on this move. He took a leadership position to his peers, which is never easy. But most importantly, he showed up Dolores Umbridge. And that's the real brave accomplishment here, folks. Harry, what were you thinking? You left us feeling like Dumbledore after you got your name pulled out of the Goblet of Fire. Harry, you put your name in the Goblet of Fire. Oh, you put people's lives at stake, Harry. You lost Sirius because of your decision. Were you mad, Harry? Honestly, nothing was brilliant about this decision. You just keep messing up. Anybody can paint. All you need is 
a dream in your heart? Whew. Thanks, editor. You always know how to get these videos back on track. Harry saw that one of his visions came true when Mr. Weasley was attacked. However, the rest of the Order knew Voldemort would use these images to trick Harry. It was only a matter of time. Sure enough, Harry sees Sirius in trouble and runs. He doesn't even care that it's a trap. Maybe if he'd done his Occlumency training thoroughly, this wouldn't have happened. The worst part is Hermione and Ron tell him that it's a trap in a few different ways. What if Voldemort meant for you to see this? Harry, though, just doesn't seem to care. He panics. He falls right into Voldemort's hands and retrieves the prophecy. His foolish choice was a self-fulfilling prophecy. Well, did that last entry get you heated? We hope we nailed those big moments that you were looking for out of Harry Potter. Let us know how we did. Like this video and subscribe to get more Harry Potter-themed videos. We release content daily, so thanks to our subscribers who never miss out.